Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. A group of old souls sits in front of me, as they often do. Each one with his own attributes that are spiritual as well as earthly. A duality which is present on purpose, which literally speaks of the year you're in, which is 2011. If you examine the numbers of the 2011, as we have discussed with you, you get the energy of the 2 and the 11. The 2 absolutely representing duality, the 11 is illumination. You might say it's the illumination of duality. When you add them together, you get a 4, which is structure and Gaia. And so this is the year where a great lesson occurs. Lesson is occurring in groups as well as individuals. The entire reason for the lessons is to develop compassion. If the earth becomes more compassionate in any way at all, the actual spiritual vibration of the planet increases. And that is the goal. And so the old souls in the room have a goal for their being here at all. It's not just to exist. It's not to solve problems while you're here. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'll talk about a metaphor which we have given so often before that takes on special meaning as we give it again and a title for this message, which we don't often give. I'll let my partner do that later. This time I'm going to give it. It's the attributes of the match bearer. And they sit in front of me right now. Two areas of concern that you come in with. Two questions you carry as you sit in the chairs. The first set of questions are all about yourself, as they should be. You ask how I can get from A to B, how I can become better at what I'm here for. How I can live longer, you might ask. How I can eliminate drama in my life, you might ask. How I can be healthier, you might ask. And the second part is, what am I doing for the planet? The questions are really something that are a pair. They are commensurate with why you're here. They're a confluence of energy. For old souls want to know how they can stay longer and do the work that they came for. And if you would interview everyone here in the chair, they would have a different answer for what the work is. <laughs> and so we're going to be quite generic and yet fairly specific. And we're going to give you concepts that you haven't thought of. The reason you are here, old soul, on this planet is to hold light in dark places. You're not here to try to evangelize any other human being in what you believe. For belief is not the issue. The vibration of the planet is the issue. It can only be changed with consciousness that is pure. Not in what you believe. It is in the being and not the doing. It is being light. For as you walk around with illumination, you change that which is dark. You might say, you take the new energy, where the old energy used to be, and it changes. 
And that is your entire purpose. And we're going to be specific here in a moment. So we're going to go from the big to the little. The first is this, before I even start the teaching, the first is this, again, for the ones in the room and for the ones specifically who are hearing this message right now, I see you, I do. One of the attributes of God is that there is no time. If you are presenting yourself at this moment to this recording, it's in the now. And the now is now for me. It is not for the souls in front of me. For the souls in front of me are in a three-dimensional state on a track of time. It's critical for them to live their lives in a succinct way. But not me. So the potential of your ears hearing this was known to me today, on this date. I know you're here. I know you're listening. Hard for you to understand. If God cannot tell the future, you might say, crying, how did you know I would be listening? <laughs> and that answer is easy. Because the potential of your being there was so strong, I knew you'd do it. I sit in front of a group of approximately 100. Now, I knew when they made their decision to come. I knew of the potentials of them finding about the meeting. I knew even those who found out yesterday. I knew. For the potentials of this energy is what is in the quantum soup. Not the future, but the potentials. This allows us to bring forward an entourage that is then complementary of those who sit in the chairs, of the old souls and their lives, of their lessons, even of what the subject will be of the channels. We wait for you to come and sit before us, dear ones, before we really know what we're going to say and what we're going to do. So I know you, and I thank you for being here. Now let us start the teaching. The metaphor has been given over and over. It is that with a room full of entities called humanity, which walk around in darkness. And the metaphor of this is spiritual darkness. They don't know who they are, why they are. They have no concept that they are part of the creative energy of God. And they follow whatever is given to them, whatever doctrines they learn about, they find God in whatever corner they can. Some find God profoundly, some do not. Seemingly in the dark, they bump into one another. Some of them bump into another and become angry. A war starts. That's what happens in the dark. You can't really see what's going on. Apart from what you know about you, therefore what is always going on apart from you is a mystery, therefore there is a drama, therefore, therefore. Being in the dark creates war. Being in the dark creates separation and hatred. Being in the dark creates fear and anxiety. But there is one in the darkness who knows who they are. And you might say that the attribute of this person is, we will call them the match bearer. They bear with them the ability to create light. Small as it might be, they have a match. And in a fully darkened room, one lit match is interesting. It creates light enough to see dimly for everyone. And that one match bearer 
in that darkened room decides on their own because of their own course with their own study, their own higher self, their own self-worth to light their match. And they light it for themselves so that they can take the hand of the higher self and discover who they are. <clears throat> and so they light the match. And in the process of lighting that match, they illuminate very dimly the rest of the room. Suddenly humans can see one another and they like it. They see family. Fear starts to go away. Understanding what is next to you creates peacefulness. There is less distrust some actually look for where the light has come from. Many don't. The attribute of the light of the match bearer is similar to the lighthouse which we have given you before. The lighthouse stands alone, all by itself, shining a light that others may or may not see it to steer them into safe harbors with their own choice. The match bearer is sitting with the match, has illuminated it for themselves, yet it affects all around them in a positive way. The match bearer says nothing. Those around them may not know the name of the match bearer. They may not even know they've lit a match. All they know is they can see. Some of them start looking for the match in them and they light theirs and the room becomes brighter. The brighter the room becomes, the more is seen. The further a human being can see past themselves and their immediate family, the more understanding there is, the more peace there is, the less fear and anxiety. This is the attribute of the planet as we see it right now. We have made the statement over and over that less than one half of one percent of the planet must strike the match for there to be peace on earth. And that is why, that is the attribute. That means there can be human beings all over the planet who never strike a match, who don't believe anything that you believe, and they'll still participate. They participate in your light. Hard, perhaps, for you to grasp how one small match would make a difference, but it does. And in this room, and listening to me now, are match bearers. How do I know that? Because <laughs> I know you. Oh, human being. There are warriors in this room. There are stories that make your hair stand on end. There's heroic, heroic actions. There's sorrow beyond belief. There is gratitude. Everything that you can imagine that has ever happened on the planet, it's, there are those who participated in it all right here. Some of the greatest dramas ever presented on the planet you were there to see, you participated in. Some of the most heroic actions any human being can do for another, you've done. Some of the suffering that never should have occurred on the planet, you've experienced. Some of the greatest celebrations. that the planet has ever seen or about you. Men who have given birth because their gender is different. Women who have worn the battle armor because their gender was different. Old souls take turns 
But they have something in common, and that's what I'm going to tell you now, and I want you to listen because this is a concept you never thought of. You stay in family groups for a very, very long time. You stay in cultures for a very, very long time. Oh, you may move around once you're born, but you can't change your blood, can you? You can't change where you came from no matter where you move, can you? You may sit in a chair today in America, but it can't change where you were born. And so what I want to talk about is outside the purview of three dimensions. This means it's outside of your understanding of the way things work, how you think about ancestors, relatives, ancestry in general, how things work in particular. So now we're going to talk about your parents and your grandparents and their parents. All the way back, a hundred years. My partner spoke today of fractal time. He gave you examples of how time is actually in a circle. That makes no sense in three dimensions as you look at it. But it is the way of things even in the quantum. That your own science is starting to understand and participate in the belief the time may very well be in a circle and has what they would call fractals and that is a predictable cycle of potential influences that they can be computed that they sit there even without computation as esoteric predictions that those with calendars can make we have discussed with you that the Maya had that system in their observatories and besides being those who studied astronomy they took the esoterics and placed it over that giving you the fractals of prediction even of today we told you you're in a 36 year window of the precession of the equinoxes the center of which is 2012 we told you this 36 year event is what you have called the 2012 energy and also what you have called the great shift. If it is so that it was predictable and if it is so that it was expected, therefore I now take you to the other side of the veil <laughs> where there is no time. And on the other side of the veil, I want to tell you about the meetings that you think have taken place that are still taking place. When there is no time, there are only potentials. And when there are only potentials, even the past, present, and the now are blurred to you. The future is not known, but the potentials of what you might do are. And the strength of the potentials are generated by your consciousness and what happens today. Come with me to the meeting of your parents, of your grandparents, for they represent souls just like yours, a piece of the Creator just like yours, and they may not have awakened. But let's go to this meeting where they are, even now. And you might say, well, wait a minute, my parents are alive. Huh. They're still in the meeting. Because part of your soul energy is on the other side of the veil all the time, dear one. What do you think your higher self is? It is the energy of your own personal angelic form. One foot is on the other side of the veil, one foot is in 3D. And the entire duality issue and the test of your life is to open the door and see that. And take the hand of, the, of that which is your higher self, which has been the same higher self every single time you've been on earth. Same one. There's a commonality. Do you see it? No matter how many past lives you've had, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, same soul. Same higher self. You ally with your higher self. You've got a nice discussion <laughs> with everything you've ever been. 
Come to the meeting with me. And your grandparents are there. And here's what they are saying as they look at the mind of God, which is theirs. They're not in 3D. They're in that perfect place which the Creator energy has beyond anything you can imagine, which you call God. And they're there. Although there is no individuality, although they're part of a group, the essence of the potential of who they've been and where they will be, and perhaps even where they are, is still there. I don't ask you to understand this. I just ask you to, to see it with me. Now, in what you call your past, I want to tell you what they said. We're coming into the planet. We're going to shed as much as we can of light, but we may not have much. We may not ever awaken, they're saying. Because it's not time, they're saying. But we see the potential of the, of the galactic alignment looming. We see the 36-year window is way out. We're not even going to be alive, they say. So why are we going to the planet, they say. <laughs> They're going to the planet, your grandparents, all four of them, so they can give birth to your mom and dad. Now, your mom and dad are in the meeting as well. And by the way, so are you and so are your children. Do you understand this? All together. And your parents are agreeing, yes, we will be the ones from their loins if they're with their blood, in their culture, and then we are going to come together. And we're going to do it so the timing is that our children will be born in the shift. I could go back even further than your grandparents. If it's true that the shift is known in advance, that means planning way back can occur so that it lines up perfectly so that your cellular structure has the bloodline it does. With the Akash it does. Did you ever think of this? Let's talk of your parents yet again as we've done before. They'll say we're going to come to the planet, we're going to give birth to this soul, an old soul. One of the oldest souls, older than us. And we may never awaken, but this is our chore to go on the planet. We can't hold much light. We may even criticize them. We may even throw them out. We may even abuse them. I know who's here. But that's why we're going, so that they will become old souls with the potential of an awakening. They are the match bearers. The ones born in this time that can light a match and illuminate the planet. Did you ever think of that? Your parents came together on purpose. Oh, I know. <laughs> You're going to say, wait a minute, Brian, you don't know my parents. <laughs> I don't think they have that consciousness in them. <laughs> Maybe not on this side of the veil, dear ones, but do you understand what I'm saying? With the mind of God, they came in saying, we won't wake up. We don't even know what we're doing. But we're going to have a child that's a match bearer, an old soul. That's why we're here. And if we don't believe them, throw them out, make fun of them, and even abuse them, it won't matter because they will have a life that will make the difference on the planet. And that's why we're coming in. And that's why our grandparents came in, and their grandparents came in. The lineage is there to see. The potentials are there to see. And you sit in the chair because it all worked together. And here you are, match bearer. Now let's talk about the match that you hold. Wherever you create light, in any situation, 
through your own individual actions the relationship you have to the Creator and your higher self it changes where you walk it changes that which is quantum around you the whole earth knows you if you awaken the whole earth knows you Gaia knows you you walk into the forest alone with the trees they know you the animals know you here is the light must be a match bearer look at that look at that God knows you I know you it's why you came it's what you're feeling it's why you sit in the chair it's why you came today you might say what is different about me what am I feeling in this lifetime well wake up match bearer because this is your destiny with free choice to illuminate your life to the point where all around you knows who you are so let me ask you about your family I'm going to ask you about your immediate family your blood family how are you treating them well, there's some who say well they don't count because <laughs> I don't like them very much that's where the drama circles all the time I do my best but I don't like them very much But I sure am good when I go to New Age meetings. Hmm? Yeah, I love everybody there. Everybody, one of them does. I didn't ask you that. That's easy. Because you all got a light. <laughs> hmm. No, I'm talking about you alone in the dark. I want to know how you're treating your family. Let me tell you how the match bearer sees family, immediate family. They look past the abuse, they look past the drama, they look and see what has been done for them. Mom and Dad, thank you for giving me life and for knowing on the other side of the veil that I can change the planet. Thank you for what you've done. And no matter what the words are and the slings and the arrows, the arrows and the abuse and the names, no matter what, they bounce off. Now is that you? you come into relationships you grow the relationships change you stay in them for a long time they change now there's drama there perhaps yeah there is <laughs> yeah there is I know who's here now that's not a blood relative but that's a, an elective <laughs> how do you look at them No matter what the words were, no matter what the actions were, no matter what the betrayals were, no matter what goes on today, the match bearer looks at them and says, this is a creature of God, designed to give me lessons, to push me out of the nest, maybe even give me a kick in the pants, so I can have compassion for the rest of humanity. Thank you, God, for them. That's what the match bearer says. Can you do that? The match bearer has the light of God. And you may say, well, you're just describing Mother Teresa. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do any of those to you. This is a hard call, Cryon, because you really don't know what happened. Oh, yes, I do. You see, I was there. <laughs> and by the way, so were all the angels you carry around. Why didn't you take their hand <laughs> when they had it outstretched? I know who's here. You always wanted to do it alone, don't you? You better be listening, my partner, because this is for you, too. You always want to do it alone. Mm -hmm. All that help to surround you, you always want to do it alone. <laughs> the attributes of the pure match bearer is one where they push love. They have tolerance for every single human being they come into contact with. They assume love. I don't want to tell you about dark and light. Yet again, if you've got a light lit, darkness cannot invade you. Do you know that? How can darkness, which has no energy at all, be around and invade you when you're holding the light? Darkness, as defined, is the absence of light. 
You got a 3D concept that says, well, I don't want to go there because the darkness may get me. I'm very careful where I go because I don't want to go around these people because they have, they have dark energy. <laughs> Why don't you go there and shine your light in their life? Oh, courageous one. <laughs> How do you treat your family? When you go to work, what goes on there? I can hear the verbiage now. This is coming from one of those who's listening. I got the worst boss in the world. You don't want to know about it. You don't think I know? One who delights in torturing you with tasks that make no sense at all, just to make you work. Who doesn't like the new age because they happen to believe different and making it hard for you. You don't think I know who you are? Those in charge don't al always have the wisdom to be in charge. Sometimes they're egomaniacs. Don't you think we know this? That's how they got where they were. <laughs> and how do you treat them? Do they continue to push your buttons? Do they do things just to irritate you? Or perhaps you just have one who just perhaps is always depressed. <laughs> Now you have to walk into dark energy. I want to give you the truth, match bearer. If you're holding light, none of that is going to affect you. You're going to walk into that place. You open the door, you're going to be saying, thank you, God, I have a job. <laughs> thank you, it's here for now. Because wherever I go, I'm going to make a difference. And you might say, I can't make a difference at work. You don't know my work. <laughs> oh, you don't know about quantum energy, do you? Oh, how 3D of you. You don't know that the light that you have through tolerance, appreciation, the smiles and the love, the ability to share, to listen, changes the planet. And those around you eventually may actually come to you with their issues and their problems and you will sit and you'll be saying, I wonder why they want to share it with me. <laughs> maybe it's because they see your light, maybe because they see your tolerant, maybe you're the only one that will listen to them. And in the process you share love. In the process of them being next to you, you love them. And maybe it's the only love they're going to get that day or that week or that month or even that year, dear human being. Dear match bearer, that's what you do, one human at a time. And the earth changes one human at a time. And that's why you came. And that's why your parents saw it. They saw it. Everywhere you walk, every situation you're in, you have a chance to strike the match. The greater your light, the greater the planet's light. And you wonder why you came to the planet. I'm not a healer, I'm not an author, I'm not a channeler, I'm just, I just go to work. <laughs> Come home, do errands, make the beds, go to work. <laughs> what kind of a life is this? I'll tell you, it's a match bearer's life and your lineage ask for you to come. For you to walk on the planet, strike the match, go to work, make the beds, do the errands. That's why you're here. I don't want you to diminish that for a moment. How do you handle fear and anxiety? What pushes your buttons? What makes you worry? Is it about time to get a handle on that? What's happening in your body? <laughs> it's tested you lately. I don't just talk to those in the chairs. I talk to my partner. I talk to him all the time. He's just like you. He walks through life just like you. He has some of the same questions you do. And he's the channeler. <laughs> and so I talk to all. I'm crying. Never been a human being, always standing on the outside. I'm in charge, if you want to say, of the information that comes through your guides, that comes through your higher self, from the energy of the planet. I was not even allowed here. 
until this shift began because the energy was not commensurate with the energy of the information that I teach. And now I am. I'll be here a long time. <laughs> Because the potentials are for the energy to stay and grow and be. All because of the match bearers. How do you handle fear? Whatever you're afraid of, do you understand where fear comes from? It comes from the gut. And if you let it, it'll go right to the third eye. It'll go right to the highest chakra. It'll end up in the pineal. Total and complete shutdown of the core to the higher self. That's what fear does. It's designed to be a test. And what are you going to do with it? I'll tell you. And there are those of you who have been successful with this and know absolutely. My partner recently discovered this personally. If you can shut the fear off before it gets to the heart, it'll never go any further. <laughs> and it'll just sit there like a, like a child in the back seat, irritating you, asking you when you're going to get there. <laughs> but you're still driving at your own pace, aren't you? And they can make all the fuss they want. It doesn't change how you steer, unless, of course, you let it steer. Oh, human being. First fear you feel, first anxieties you feel, tell it to get in the back seat. You're driving, you're in charge, your higher self is the one. Don't lose your core. Never lose your core. Easier said than done. But you can do it. You can do it. This is an energy that says no matter how deep your depression, no matter how far you are in the dark, that the core will always win with a match bearer. Your light will always win with intent. What irritates you the most? What buttons get pressed? <laughs> When you watch the news, when you see politics, when you see certain kinds of things, do you get angry? Think of what makes you the angriest, and now let me ask you, can you love it? Well, that's what the match bearer learns. I hate war. You might say, I don't want anything to do with it. I hate the sorrow that it creates, the heartbreak that it creates. It seems to perpetuate itself. I'm not asking you to love war. I'm asking you to love the humans that created it. They're pieces of God just like you. If you can do that, I want to tell you, you shine light in their life. It doesn't matter where they are, and they never know who you are. Just like the lighthouse. How many ships... And the captains of the ships have gone to lunch with the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> and the answer is none of them. But they look for the lighthouse, don't they? Humanity looks for you. It's time. They all come in with this knowledge. There are match bearers everywhere. Everywhere my partner goes, auditoriums fill with match bearers. That's why they're there. They don't know. They don't know it. They don't know why. They just feel it inside. Old souls coming together to participate in an event called the Seeds of Peace on Earth. When this 36-year window is over, you would have planted them securely, permanently. And the potential will unravel itself and unfold itself and there'll be more wild cards for you to see. Countries that do things you don't expect them to do. Dictators who fall. Putting things together, not tearing them apart. This is the potential we saw 22 years ago. It is the potential we continue to see today. You are still on track. Nothing has derailed it. And you still have free choice. It's not a given. It's not a set future. 
It is the potential that we see in a quantum state and we still see it. It is building upon itself. There is evidence that is manifesting and the match bearers continue to light their matches. When we opened this program, this seminar with a small channel, we invited those who would build a wall between me and them through self-doubt and through skepticism to open it, to let me in for a little while. Now I give you the opportunity to put the wall back. If you came here and you don't want any part of this and you're not ready, it is your safety net to put the wall back. I know that and I say to you, put it back. Because you're not ready. And we don't want to force anything upon you. We don't want you to leave with an energy you don't want. This is for those match bearers who feel it is appropriate and timely. Not for the ones who don't. So it isn't up to us to push anything upon you to make you feel guilty. <laughs> oh no. I'll tell you what spirit does like a beautiful parent congratulating their children for a job well done. The parent never makes the child guilty unless they're a bad parent. <laughs> no. It's all about congratulations. So, dear human, if you're in the room now and you are one who doesn't believe this is channeling, who doesn't believe anything that we have been talking about now, put the wall back. It is your security, it is your safety for now, and walk out of this place like you came. We'll congratulate you for it, for that's synchronistic. But I want to give you some information. You will never forget what you heard today. When my partner first heard these things, he criticized them and called them stupid and silly. Today he teaches them. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> so does he. When the time is right, the time is right. And if it happens in this lifetime, so be it. If it doesn't, you'll be back, match bearer. The match doesn't go away. The old soul carries it as long as they need to and your children will carry it as well. And that is the truth of it, and it is a beautiful plan. Less than one half of one percent of this human population must light the match for all this to take place. And it's slowly happening. That's not that many of you. So let the matches be lit this day in whatever degree and someday you'll realize to have a fully lit match, they have to be lit in all places, not just one. With the family, with the relationships, with the work, with fear, with anxiety. And that's when you can face the rest of the world and say, it is well with my soul. I am that I am. I am grateful for all things. And we have a number of them here. <laughs> And that is the message of this day for you. For the listener, it is the message of Kryon. It always has been, it always will be. It becomes more succinct and clearer as the energy increases and allows for these things to be said and mentioned and taught. Mm. Grateful I am, as Kryon, to have come this distance to meet the match bearers that I always knew would be here. And so it is.